I always avoided right in here. In her film, Running From Crazy, actress Mario Hemingway is not only seen giving us a tour of her grandfather Ernest Hemingway's former home, where he committed suicide in 1961, just before she was born, but it's also a tour of her childhood fears. And somebody said, well, yes, and this is where it happened. And I was like, wow, I was so blown away. I just had no idea. The Hemingway family curse of suicide, including that of her sister Margot in 1996. The film is not one of her usual roles. It's a documentary about my life, my family's life, and their struggles with mental illness and, you know, all the suicides that I've come from. And it's kind of my journey of trying to figure out why I am the way that I am, why I made choices in my life, and why I, feel, I felt like I was running from crazy my whole life. From footage of her parents with her sister Margot during what she called wine time, family time with alcohol preceding violence, to her on-camera introspection, her life now is anything but wallowing in depression, as I sat down with her and her partner Bobby Williams about their new book. If somebody like me, because everybody thinks, oh, she has no problems, can say their story, so can you. And so it makes it universal. So we're all alike and we can share that story. The message about the willing way is you can be your own doctor, nutritionist, trainer. Everything lies within you. Let us give you the tools to find your best self. Yeah. So 50, 51, grow younger. We're doing it. Everybody can. I didn't know I was depressed till I wasn't depressed because I was depressed all my life. I was scared all my life that I was going to either wake up crazy or have cancer like my mother did or, or, you know, or addicted or this or that. Now, I did have addictions. I was addicted to like being obsessed with health. I was controlling. I was this. I was that. I exercised too much. I was an extremist. But, I, but it was in search of balance. I really just wanted to be healthy, and I was so scared. And what's great is that there was no real understanding that I was sad or depressed because I didn't know anything different. I mean, I didn't know what it was like to be Marielle Jones. I only knew what it was like to be Marielle Hemingway. But then when I kind of pulled myself out of it, and it really happened four years ago when I met Bobby, it just started to, it was like I was unraveling. I'd, ha I'd been in a very long marriage that I was very unhappy based on my own choices. I just, because I didn't know any different. It was so much better than my childhood. I thought, oh, this is good. So it, 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 it unraveled and then I was like, wow, I can be happy, I can laugh, I can feel like a kid every single day because I wake up differently. And that has been a journey and that's what I wanted to share with people. That if you start to speak, healing happens after that. It's not overnight, it's not, and it may not be the end all solution for you, but it certainly is gonna help. And I just think, you know, years ago, nobody wanted to talk about alcohol, alcoholism or whatever. Now people talk about it. It's the same thing with mental illness. We just need to get the word out. I mean, there was something incredible we did, uh, I did yesterday for Healing Companions about psychiatric uh, dogs that help people with psychiatric problems. I was so moved how these animals are helping these people live normal lives that suffer from, you know, from schizophrenia, from really dark stuff Panic that's very, pan anxiety, you know, whatever. It was, you know, so there's a lot of things about mental illness, wellness, that just need to be expressed so that people have knowledge, because people here's suffer a, more than they say. Here's a great example, the McLean Institute, right, over at Harvard. 1911, or, or 1811 rather, two, over 200 years ago when they started out, they didn't have psychopharmaceutical drugs. They gave people a job. They got them outside, put them in the sun, exercise, food, water, rest. Hmm. That was helping these people with mental illness. They said to Mariel, what we are doing, uh, they want to implement back into their program. Yeah. And they said, not that we're going to take drugs away completely, but uh, we, here's the deal. The body's self-sufficient, self self-healing, and self-sustaining. We just need to know the information of what to give it right and to give ourselves and we're all individuals we all have different individual needs but self-sufficient self-healing self-sustaining how powerful is that yeah that gives you your power back you don't have to look outside yourself our bodies to want this. to be healthy that's the They're thing our body expanding. and mind really is not trying to kill you it's actually trying to heal you all the time that's its job is to make us healthy healthy right, you healthy you don't wake up in the morning i'm like bob's got a cold let's kill him off <laughs> It's like, how do I get better, right? Trees, the same thing, right? We talk about trees. People don't realize how powerful. What they breathe out, we breathe in. 
they don't wake up in the morning and go, having a bad day, got to kill off a couple of branches, you know. But we are being programmed and inundated with our unconscious thinking doing these things. Well, to bring consciousness to the public, that's what Meryl and I are hopeful to do and to help people become more conscious and aware of their sort of habits. You know, it's no different than driving a car, your foot goes to the brake, you don't think, my foot has to go to the brake, there's a red light. So the same thing with going to reach for something to eat. I, you know, make you, different choices, drink, or, make healthy choices, because yeah. it makes a difference. It's just all about everything, all the choices you make. On your side in Cleveland, Dave Arnold, News Channel 5.